Hello, everyone. My name is Martin Kotliak, and today I'll be presenting our work LTRAC, Stealthy Tracking of Mobile Phones in LTE. And this is a joint work of me, Simon Ernie, Patrick Loy, Mark Roslin, and Professor Sergeant Chapkun. So in LTE networks, we have base stations, and we have mobile phones connecting to those base stations. And in our work, we want to show you how an attacker with a limited set of attacking devices can basically track all the users. So what does an attacker need to do to track users? First, he needs a location of all the mobile phones. And secondly, he needs identity of those phones. So LTRAC is, does a stealthy tracking using passive localization and stealthy identification. So first, a bit of background about physical layer of LTE networks. So in, LT, in LTE, all the information is being sent, obviously, on the, through radio interface, uh, inside a um, resource grid. This resource grid is 2D in, in frequency and time. Therefore, every single resource element, so these are the individual squares, contains some, some data. If a user wants to decode data into it or like address to him, he first needs to look for these downlink DCIs so these uh, DCI blocks contain actually a location of the user data and how a user can decode those locations. So essentially, user A, user B, and user C, have, they have multiple different DCIs. What about uplink? So everything in LTE is managed by the base station. Mobile phone cannot just decide right away to send data on the uplink frequencies. He needs to wait for uplink DCIs, which are sent on downlink by the base station, which tell the users where in the uplink the user can send the data. So these are, again, somehow like the pointers to the allocations by the base station. So in our work, we actually build a downlink and uplink sniffer, which work by sniffing first the DCIs and then being able, using these information, to decode Informa user information on both downlink and uplink. Our sniffer doesn't break encryption, but physical layer, Mac layer are not encrypted, therefore we can sniff those. Everything in LT networks is tightly synchronized. So what would happen if this was not the case? So let's imagine um, the, ba uh, the base station sends the uplink DCI message, and it expects to receive uplink data exactly four milliseconds afterwards. However, due to the propagation delay, this uplink DCI is going to travel for some time, and the phone will receive it with some delay, with some propagation delay in delta. After four milliseconds, it will sense the uplink data, and it will arrive to the base station again, delayed by the propagation delay. Therefore, it doesn't arrive at the expected time, but it arrives four milliseconds plus two times the propagation delay after uplink DCI was sent by the base station. So in the uplink resource grid, this will turn out to be uh, the, the user data will be basically misaligned by some propagation delay. This is obviously, base station can estimate this propagation delay. Also, our sniffer can do this. So in LTE, we have a special message for this. It's called timing advanced command, which will tell the user how much it's delayed and how much in advance it should send the message. So imagine the base station sends the uplink DCI, and then instead of waiting four milliseconds, the phone waits four milliseconds minus the value inside the timing advanced command, and then the user, user's phones will, will send the uplink data and will arrive to the base station at the expected time. So how can we use these information for passive localization? So obviously the first constraint is very easy. This timing advanced command is sent in the Mac layer, which is unencrypted. We can sniff it with our uplink and downlink sniffer, just, well, just downlink sniffer. And we can infer the location of the phone in this gray ring. I don't know if you can see it well, but there is a gray ring, with a, which is wide 78 meters. Uh, this, it's, it's 78 meters wide because of the discretization error of the timing advanced command value. So essentially, it's not a float number. It's, it's just some integer. Second localization constraint which we have is due to the basically propagation delays. So the base station sends 
the uplink DCI, and then the phone replies with the uplink data. And uh, because our sniffer can sniff essentially both the uplink DCI and the uplink data, he can infer from this delay um, an ellipsis with two focal points in the base station and the, and the sniffer. The shape of the, of the ellipsis is basically inferred from this, down, this propagation delay. So we can, show, we can show it also from this perspective. So the uplink DCI is sent by the base station. It arrives with some propagation delay to the phone. The, the sniffer actually knows exactly when the uplink DCI was sent because he knows its location. He knows also the base station location. Therefore, it knows what's the propagation delay between these two entities. Therefore, it knows exactly when the uplink DCI was sent. Phone then waits for milliseconds and it replies, and then it replies with the uplink data, which will arrive to the sniffer again with some propagation delay. Therefore, the, the attacker is able to measure this time between the uplink DCI was sent and uplink data was received by the, by the sniffer. This then constrains this uh, geometry of this ellipsis. So essentially, we are able to, to get the location on the intersection of this wide ring and the ellipsis using just one, using just one attacking device. This is because we are essentially using the base station as, as an attacking device as well in this case. Obviously, we can get even better using additional, additional sniffers, but this is, not necessary, this is not necessary, essentially. So we, can, we have also some distance measurement uh, demo. So we have a, the camera, base station, and the sniffer are exactly at one location, and I'm walking away in this beautiful catwalk. And uh, the corridor is exactly 15 meters long. I go there and back, and you can see in the graph that Essentially, I went from zero meters to 15 meters. So individual measurements are the blue lines. So this is for every single uplink data. And uh, the orange line is a smoothed out average of these. Uh, for our distance measurement evaluations, we used four different phones at six different uh, distances, from zero, ranging from zero to 60 meters. And we found out that the error was roughly uh, six meters, or maximum six meters in 90% of the time. Usually it was even better, obviously. So we showed you how we can do passive localization. What about stealthy identification? So all the users uh, in LTE protocol con have two identifiers. One is IMSI, which is a persistent identifier, which is hard-coded inside the SIM card, and it's never sent in plain text. Or, well, it's sent only the very first time the, f the, the user connects to the network. Otherwise, the phone always uses TeamZ, which is a temporary identifier, which is assigned by the network and it changes regularly. And it is sent at every single connection attempt. So as I said at the beginning, we need, for tracking, we need both localization and uh, the identity. Obviously, we can use TeamZ for the identification. However, when the TeamZ would change, we wouldn't be able to match these two TeamZs together that it, it's one person. Therefore, we need to somehow find a way how to get the IMZ out of the, uh, how we can get IMZ out of the phone. So this was usually done using IMZ catchers based on the fake base stations. However, we have a new type of attacking method called overshadowing, where we don't send something at the se all the time, like fake base station, but we only overshadow one single message in the protocol. This is uh, way better than, than fake base station, not only because we send very limited, in very limited time, but also we need only 1.8 dB more power than an original signal, whereas for fake base, station, fake base stations, it's roughly around 30 dB. So our overshadowing is basically very stealthy, it's not detectable at all, and normal detection methods for fake base station don't work. So we are basically overshadowing the signal. So we, we call our system adapt over, and what happens in the resource given on downlink, we overshadow the DCI with our malicious DCI, which then points to malicious user data. In the protocol level, usually during normal connection setup, uh, we first, uh, the phone sends some connection information with the TeamZ, then it sends service request, and the base station replies with the security mode command. We overshadow this message with an identity request, which asks the phone for its IMSI. 
The phone then will be happy to answer us with its MC number, send in plain text, which we can sniff using our sniffer. So the next picture just shows uh, how our uh, setup looks like. On the left-hand side, you have the overshadowing setup called Adaptover. On the right-hand side is our sniffer, both uplink and downlink sniffer. At the bottom, you can see a picture from Wireshark with the IMSI number here, essentially uh, showing how we did the attack in the real, in the real world network of a Swiss operator. To summarize, LTRAC does stealthy tracking using passive localization based on timing, advanced command, and propagation delay estimation, and stealthy identification based on overshadowing and uplink sniffing. So thank you very much. Do you have any questions?